Okay. Uh, so, uh, how are you guys doing? How is the weekly task going on? Today, we are going to focus on automating the optimal prompt search. Uh, we are going to interact with the API. Uh, I think up until now, uh, you have been mostly using the interface of Cohere or other platforms, but on today's session, we we'll look on how we can interact with the API and how we can also use different techniques. Uh, have you guys been able to interact with the API and produce some output on yesterday's interim submission? Uh, Nathaniel, can you just give us Okay, so Nathaniel, can you just tell us what you have done and what you've been able to get after? You or the other Nathaniel? Uh, Nathaniel Masrasha. Okay. Okay. Okay, I think you can speak. In okay, Josias. Yes, hello. 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 Hello, Joseph. We can hear you. OK, sure. So what I did first, I tried to generate an API key on the platform. And then I used that uh, in my face codes in order to, in order to extract some quantities using the, the, using the job description. And I tried also to create its, its scores using the scoring data. So, but okay. first, what I did, yeah, what I did, I just uh, tried one example, and I have exported the code, and then I used the, the model, the the, the code, the, the configuration provided by the code, and then I have I have adjusted that to what I would like to start to create. Okay, great. Uh, what are you using? Uh, what are you using for your backend? Okay. Yeah. yeah. You're using what? I'm using. Uh, no, please come again. I did not get the question. I, okay. I thought that you were talking about the platform that I was using. Uh, no, I was talking about what are you using for your backend development, which technology are you using for your backend to build the API or or have you you didn't start building the API you are just interacting with the uh, API provided programmatically without building an API yes it's what I'm doing for the moment I did not start yet building my own API okay okay sure sure uh, okay so uh, for today, we are going to look at uh, at how we can uh, use Flask to create APIs. And uh, for this week's challenge, you can use Flask, Fast API, or even Django to build your API. Uh, I'm just going to show you how we can uh, use Flask for API RESTful API development, and uh, we'll be connecting to Cohere's API by using Flask's endpoint. Uh, so I've just set up. I've just set up the uh, channels. The question. Channels gone. Just yes, you can use fast API. Uh, Flask is optional, not necessarily. You can use fa uh, Fast API or even Django. Internet. Okay, Django. So that's not a creation. So uh, I'm just going to show you uh, the basic structure or the basic uh, layout of Flask and how we can build uh, a very simple Flask endpoints to be able to interact with other endpoints or, or with other APIs and how we can serve our uh, what we have been able to infer from 
Okay, the, the Flask is just one way. I'm more comfortable, especially when uh, working with models, model building, model deployment, and in France, uh, I mostly use Flask, but if you are comfortable with Django or FastAPI, I think that's also okay. You can use that. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to show you the basic uh, skeleton of Flask API I have uh, in my code. So the first thing is uh, you'll have to install Flask. You can install Flask. And since I've already installed Flask, uh, it will not install, but for you, uh, you'll first need to install Flask. And after installing Flask, I'm importing uh, Flask request JSON file in render template. Uh, we won't be using render template because uh, uh, we'll only be using render template when we are serving HTML contents and uh, interacting with web pairs. But for now, we'll primarily be using the first three uh, modules from Flask, Flask request and JSON file. So the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to initialize or create an instance of the Flask class. And uh, for different endpoints, before I move on, uh, there are different methods that you can use, especially in RESTful API, which is the create, uh, put, post, update, uh, not put, post, patch, and delete. Uh, can someone just tell me what uh, the different methods are? in developing RESTful API, not necessarily in Flask, but in any backend development. The card, yes, Anjanet. Yeah, basically they're called uh, HTTP verbs. So uh, they're used, their protocol to interact with uh, through HTTP protocol. So if we want to like just fetch an information from uh, a server, we will use get requests from our browser to get the information or get uh, either JSON data or uh, even HTML body uh, from the server. We used uh, just get request. We use uh, push request to update. We use uh, push, uh, I mean, pulse request to uh, uh, send, uh, I mean, we use post request to like save a data or uh, most like update, but basically update is uh, we we prefer to use like put put uh, for updates. So uh, when we interact in a web uh, interface, for example, if when we fill out a form, uh, the form will be sent to the server. So we're sending data from our side to the server, so from client to the server. So when we do that, we use a post, uh, post request in that case. Uh, if we're, for example, let's say like if we're changing our profile, uh, we're like updating our uh, information. So we will, so we are updating an existing information of ours or like it could be also others uh, on, uh, on the server. So uh, from the client side, we use a put request with that. Um, I think these are the four, the main uh, four puts, uh, the, the, the main four verbs of uh, HTTP request, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you, Internet. So uh, the most used, the most used uh, methods are the post to create a record and the put and push to update a document. We'll mostly use puts uh, when we are going to update the entire record, but patch when we are going to update a specific field uh, from a record and delete to delete the record. And uh, the gate is to just fetch data from an endpoint. So uh, what we are doing here is we are specifying a route. So the route is, this is a gate route. By default, if we do not specify the methods, this is a default gate route. And what we are saying is when we hit this endpoint or when, I, when a request comes to the index route, the index route meaning the the slash route is the index route in uh, the web world. So when we get the slash, I'm sorry. So when we get the slash, it goes to the index. So we can render the index page in HTML just for now. We can uh, find status. Uh, so 
what this will do is it will just return a JSON file which with a status of success. And let me comment this out. And uh, this part of the code is just trying to initialize or uh, specifying the port and running it in debug mode. So uh, we can easily detect any kind of text that we encounter while developing the app. But in production, we mostly uh, disable the debug property. But since we are just developing, we'll enable that. So I will run the app by using Python app.py and change the directory. Okay, so my app is now up. It gives me the endpoints. So if I know if I now go to the endpoint, it gives me the status with success, and this is the gate route. Uh, so if you want to specify different endpoints, uh, you can use the gate, the methods to specify the gate and the post method. And when we hit or when we when a request comes with a gate request, we can re return or render the the gate endpoint. And when a post request comes, we can render the or we can execute the post uh, function. Can uh, specify here and uh, let's just uh, try maybe just to show you what we are going to do we can add another route to our uh, maybe let me just specify it as API and items and the methods we'll be using uh, are the gate and the post uh, okay so I'll just items. Okay, so this let me just go over this and I will disable it. This is copilot. Uh, I think Anesthesia or yes, Anesthesia has also been specifying this. This is one of the examples of large language models. Uh, copilot will generate mostly its generative model and uh, it's mainly trained using codes. Uh, they say it's from public GitHub uh, repos, but uh, yeah, I think that's it, and it will generate the code, or it will generate the rest of the section that you are writing. Uh, just for now, we'll disable it for Python. And so for the items route, I can check if the request is a gate request or if the request is a post request. So the request is imported from Flask, and I, I will specify if the request dot method is gate. Uh, I will return a specific uh, value for now just to try that out. Uh, we'll return status of success. And maybe message with tense routes. And we can also just to check uh, to check it out. You can specify the post request, and if this is the post route, we can say items post route. Uh, and maybe let me just ask you, maybe Antonet or others, uh, can we use a different? Uh, can we update a file or can we create a new record by using a gate route or a gate method or delete a record? Uh, by using the post or the git method? Uh, can I answer that? Yeah, go on. So like we can, uh, of course, accept uh, any kind of request from a git method, but it's up to us to do whatever we like after we just accept that uh, request in our site. So uh, if the client, for example, uh, Git request to a specific route, we might like decide, okay, let, let's just delete something. But that's not uh, optimal or the right thing to do. And most of the time, we want uh, a specific information from the user to delete or uh, create something uh, for that user. Yeah, that's correct. Thank you, Antoinette. So I, I think what so something that confuses most beginners is this part. Uh, they think or uh, it seems that the gate method or the gate request uh, seems seem to work only for uh, gate routes or gate 
yes, for gate routes, but we are doing this or we are specifying the requests uh, because it's a convention. When we are referring to the RESTful API, there, is, there are a set of conventions and we need to follow those conventions so that another developer can come and read my code easily and I can also read and maintain other developers' code. But it's possible to use a gate route to update a document, to delete a document, uh, or even to create a new document. These specific methods doesn't matter, but uh, because of convention and some other reasons, we use or we uh, go by these specific rules. So for the post route, I specified that this is the items post route, and for the gate route, uh, we should get a message of items uh, gate route. So if I now run the app, and I can go to the endpoint API slash items, uh, I will get that items get route and it's a success. So to, to test the post route, we can use Postman or standard client. Uh, you can use whatever you want. Uh, if you are comfortable with standard client, you can go for the standard client. Uh, I will just be using Postman. Okay, so the, I will copy the base URL and slash API slash items and post request. Now when I hit that route, this is a post request and I get uh, a message of items post route and it's uh, a success. So when it's a post request, we'll only be going or we'll only be visiting this specific uh, code section. But if it's a gate route, we are only going to visit this specific section. So just to show you, just for a, de a demo, I won't uh, go much on this. You can. Uh, play around with uh, building RESTful API and even uh, make your code more modular. Uh, just for now, I will be using, I will be trying to add an item by specifying a uh, list to add. And let me just, let me make it simple and items, item one and items. So I will just be reading this list and uh, I will be trying to create or update, not update, but add another uh, uh, another value to this list. Yes. So I will be uh, adding another uh, document or another record to this list and uh, fetching all of the records in this list. So for the gate route, it's going to be simple. Let me comment this out. We are, we are just going to return the JSON format of uh, the above items, which is named as items. So we can specify that this is the request is success and the items can be items. Is that your question? Yes. Uh, you created the list up there of items. Why? I, my network was off. I, I didn't hear why you created the list. Uh, sorry, I, I didn't get that. Okay, up there you created items mm. and uh, you created as a list of Jensen files. Yes. Why? Okay, so I'm just going to mimic what uh, you'd normally do or on a real world, you'd normally fetch data from a database or some file source. But now, just to show you how we can get or fetch all of the data in our database, not database, but we are just mimicking that and creating a new document or creating a new record, uh, I will just be using that statically. This will... Uh, not uh, work effectively when I reload the page or when I restart the app. Okay. You do this or you implement this, uh, uh, you use databases or file systems when implementing this in a reload application. Okay, so now if I restart the app and go specific endpoint, uh, Fine. 
Okay, well. You can see the problem. I don't see his function, right? Jason Serral is a view. Okay. You are trying to see it. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. You mean this function, right? Uh, okay. Okay, if uh, the app is not refresh, let me restart my app. Yes. Uh, uh, I just used the functions one, that was why. So uh, this will just return the list of the items in an object. So this is the JSON format. Maybe if I go to my other, yes, I have the JSON formatter and we can see that this has been formatted uh, well and we can see the list of items we have added. So to add a new item, we can use the post request. So in the post request, we are going, we are just going to append the new item and it was items list and items list dot append. Uh, what we can do is we can get uh, the data from the user. So I'm just going to show you that dot get JSON. So what this will do is it will just get the data from uh, the user and it will append that and I can finally return the new item that has been that has been updated. So the new items with status of success and item of quest dot json. Okay, so I'm going to use Postman to send data. So when I send a new item, this will the object will get updated and uh, this will return the newly updated document. So let me go to Postman and uh, use the post request. I will go to the body and send a JSON data. Uh, maybe I should specify item. I can, let's just say, uh, this. Yeah, so it's a success and the updated data is keys. So if I now go and get the, ah, okay. Get the entire data. Get the entire data and when I go, For my items and items keys. I get the keys and when I get all data, we can see that uh, I have keys added to the items. So this is just to show you the flow or the process that you'd uh, follow to create an API. The basic ones are the create, the post, and uh, you, the create, which is the post and the gate, the patch, the put, and uh, the delete. Uh, I've just shown you this, but when you are going to delete or uh, make a put patch request, you can specify the different methods here. And if the request was method uh, match that specific method, you can perform that specific request. Uh, is it clear? Are we good to move to? Okay, any question? 
Okay, so the next thing that we are going to look at now is uh, interacting with the Cohere API. Uh, I'm sure that most of you have already tried how to interact with the Cohere API and uh, create the new API because we won't just be playing with the playground that's provided by the GUI. We'll be using our own API to interact with it and serve uh, based on our needs. So I will. Yes, so I'll go to, uh, to the Cohere API and when you are when you go to the home page, you can create a new API here. I've already created a new API and if you haven't already, you can create a new API and it will give you the API key. Uh, someone was saying that uh, some of you guys were having a problem on creating the API. Okay, if not, so what you'll do is you'll go to the home page of Cohere Okay, nothing. I was pressing uh, an issue here, like um, not specifically with the API, but uh, I, I would like to for you to answer along the way. Uh, I was pressing like uh, in the in the interface part in the dashboard. It work it works perfectly. Like it uh, extract the entities perfectly, mm -hmm. but when I do it uh, with the code, when I try to make an API code from my int. It doesn't. Uh, it, it actually is, uh, returns like new line, only new line. But when I send the same prompt on the dashboard, it works fine. Uh, that issue was bugging me. Okay. How, maybe have you specified all of the required parameters? Yeah, uh, I just copied and pasted the same thing, but it it works on the dashboard. It doesn't work on the code. Okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, we'll try to debug that together. Uh, when I go along, we'll also see what's what the problem is on your side. Okay, so uh, after creating an API, it will just you'll just click uh, the create API button and give your API name, and it will give you the the key that you that you are going to use for uh, to come to connect to Cohere's API. I've already created that key and I've stored that in config.py. Uh, I'm just showing you this for this session, but I will be deleting this uh, key. Uh, you should store this key in a secret variable or environment variable, and this specific key shouldn't be pushed. So what I've done is I've added uh, the config.py to my Git ignore, and I will not be pushing it to GitHub or any other public repository. So one thing, one way that you can use uh, environment variables or secret keys in Python is by using the config module, uh, not module, but the, by by using the JSON format, by, by using the dictionary format and accessing that specific API key. And uh, in the example script, what I've done is I, I, I just copied the examples, the sample examples from Cohere. And these are the parameters that we are interested in working. So the first one is the model. There are different types of model. and we can also find two model. We'll be covering that on the later section, but uh, we'll be choosing one of the models available. And if you have already fine tuned uh, a model or customized a model, we'll be using that model name. And the number of tokens, the number of tokens that uh, we want the API to generate or the model to generate, the temperature, how uh, random or how variant each result should be, and so on. We can read this, and uh, these are the parameters that we are interested in tuning or changing based on our uh, based on our need or based on the specific call that we are going to make. So, uh, the first thing that you the first thing that you have to do is to uh, install here. I've already installed that, uh, and after you install here, you can specify the API, the API key. So. The, we are doing this in the normal way that you have been doing to import modules and scripts from uh, your parent directory. So I'm just appending the, I'm just going to the upper or to the parent directory and importing config. So from config, I'm importing or I'm getting this specific API key. Config is just a dictionary. And from the dictionary, I'm getting the API, the API key and I can uh, put this to git ignore. Uh, I'm sure there is also other ways to ignore or hide environmental variables and use use it in a different format. Uh, I'm just using the uh, the normal way and I'm adding that to git ignore. So after that, we can specify the API key. The 
one requirement for queries client is to, when initializing the query client is to give the API key. And after that, we are just going to do a classification task or classification model. You can also work with the uh, generative model as well as the embedding model. And for the model, we are using the large, the large one. You can also use the medium and the small or the custom model that you, are, you fine tuned. And the inputs that uh, we want our model to generate is this specific inputs. Uh, to get this code, you can you just can go to uh, for example, yes, we can go to the classify section and uh, after we are sure that our model is performing well, we can export our code and we can export it in different language. I just copied the Python uh, the Python format of the uh, API interaction. So this is exactly the same thing. And I'm using this specific code to interact, uh, to get the classification results. I'm just going to show you how this will work in uh, in API environment. In examples, and when I run the classify uh, Python file, what I will get is, uh, I will get the confidence interval for each of uh, uh, the classification classes. So uh, as you can see here in examples, we specified three different classes. The first one is the shipping and handling policy. The second one is the start, return, or exchange uh, class. And the last one is the track order. So we are just giving a, a few shots we are using the fish shots model and we are giving a sample of examples from each of the class. And finally, uh, we are expecting the model to predict or to classify these specific inputs. So based on the examples given, based on the prompts given, the model uh, will classify that and it will uh, label the data, the input data, and it will give a confidence interval for each of the input data. So for the first input, it was what can I expect my what can I expect my package and uh, the prediction for the track order it gave 0 0.25 and uh, okay let me start from the first one so the first input is am I still able to re to return my order and it give the prediction start return or exchange with the confidence of 0 0.30 and uh, this specific uh, uh, this specific input with the confidence of 0 0.18 for the track order. And for the second input, we also get three different uh, classification with three different probabilities. So for the first one, it's 0 0.25 for shipping and handling. And for start, return, or exchange, it's giving it 0 0.30. And for track order, it's, it's giving it 0 0.44. So it seems that when can I expect my package, it's, it's more of a track order classification. So after we are sure that it's classifying properly, I think we can use this model in our uh, own API. And we can also do the same thing for embedding task. Uh, the only difference is it will use the embedding uh, method available from the Cohere's uh, API, and we can uh, also print the embedding results. But what we are interested in now is we need to customize what we are getting, we need to optimize uh, what we are sending to the API, and we need to be able to serve what we get from the API to our end users. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a, a new Flask app, maybe app to dot pi, and I'm just going to copy first one and remove the items. It's good, and yes. So uh, we are now going to interact with uh, the Coheres API, so let me import my private key. Okay, and initialize. Uh, okay, uh, so now uh, we have the API key and we can now create uh, uh, 
we can now create a different endpoints to serve uh, our API uh, to serve the inference of the module that you are going to use uh, from from core here. So I will create a new route up those routes. Uh, maybe I will use uh, generate. I'm I'm going to use I will be using one of the uh, one of the resources found in your challenge document. Just we want to create or we want to uh, generate a description for a client. So based on the product name, the the uniqueness of the product and some kind of product description, we are going to generate a product description for that specific uh, item or for that specific product based on some uh, samples given. So I'm. I mean, I'll use the generate description in the point, and for the methods, I will use git and post. Okay, so this generate description. This will just generate description. Okay, so now uh, based on the request, so the first request will be maybe it's if request dot method equals it uh, will perform some specific task, else if request dot method is, is post. Sorry. Okay, so we'll uh, use different methods for the gate uh, route and for the post route. So, uh, what do you guys think is the appropriate method to use just to make an inference from an endpoint or just to access a data or make an inference from queries in the point? Should we use gate or post? Yeah. Okay, nothing. Nothing. Please, I, please I'll let you to come again with the question. I okay, so uh, to make an inference, we are going to make an inference using the queries API and uh, serve some kind of content after making an inference. Should we use the Git? method or the post method? Technically, I think the post method, method is the right one, but it would work out if you use a gate one to do it. Yeah, OK. Uh, Wangri? Um, I was going to say the post. Okay. Uh, sorry, the get. I was going to say get. Sorry. OK. Yeah. Why? Um, because you want to get the different entities from uh, the example you feed from uh, the prompt. OK. Uh, and not? Uh, basically, whenever we want to get any information from the user, it's preferable to use a post request because uh, with the request, we can send a JSON body of data uh, to the server so that the server, the API in the point can access it uh, pretty much easily. But we can also use uh, query parameters uh, along with the get request. So, uh, but that's, uh, that's not, uh, I mean, a smooth way to go about mm. it. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think uh, we can use the gate, as you have said earlier, we can use the gate method and the post method. Both of them works, but uh, when it comes to the convention, I personally prefer the post method because we are going to, uh, as Andernet and other sources said, we are going to attach a body or, yes, a body in the uh, request. Mostly we'll be using the gate method when we are just fetching a specific record or, or all records uh, by using the query parameter. But we'll be using post when we are going to create a new record to our database or file system or when we are going to attach a body 
uh, uh, in our method. So both ways work, but uh, I just prefer the post method to uh, to, to use the post method when working on this kind of specific task, but feel free to use the gate or the post, uh, but uh, I, I will go with the post method. So uh, what I will do is uh, I will just create a, a very simple, it's from, uh, okay, I can't find it, but uh, what I will do is I will just generate a description based on, uh, I think I've already put that on the model. No, okay. So I'll just be building the uh, the generative uh, API. I'll be using the generative API and we'll build or we'll generate a new description uh, for a product that a company has. So the first thing that we want is, we'll, let me just copy Let me copy this section and we'll remove the part that we don't need. Okay. We won't need the examples. We will also want to be needing the... Okay, so we are generating uh, a, new, uh, a new data. So we'll be using the generate method available. And for the model, we can use the large, the x-large, the medium, uh, or the small one. Let me just use the x-large. And uh, the next thing that we can do is we can specify the specific prompts, the, the specific parameters that are available. So let me just copy this section. Okay. Uh, we'll change the prompt for, uh, later. That's for now, let, let's just use it. And the max token can be 50, the temperature. Okay, let's just leave others as they are. And for the prompt, I think I have it somewhere. Okay. Response. Uh, I can copy. Let me just copy two of them and use that one. So, uh, we just have two prompts. Yes, so we have two different prompts. So we are training our uh, uh, our model by showing it an example. So the first company is Casper, who is producting the Wave Hybrid. And what it is, it's a mattress to improve sleep quality. And why is it unique? It helps us with bug problems. And the description is we have got your bug. Literally, improving the quality of sleep is our number one priority. And some more description. And we are using this specific separator. So we need to add this one uh, in the separators or stop sequence section. Uh, so this acts as our separator or our stop sequence. And the next example we are showing it is uh, the company Glosher and it has specific product name and uh, what makes it unique and its description. So our interest is to predict for the next uh, for the next client or for the next product. So we want to generate a new product description uh, based on the above descriptions and based on the above arrangements of the words. So I will just go on with the same. I will use. in value in the company. Uh, maybe let's just name it. Uh, I think it was go here in the product name. Let's going to find that on the other. Okay. 
Okay. Oh, okay, so the product name is the first mile and what it is. And what it makes it unique, we are just going to... Okay, so we have provided what makes it unique and the other stuff. So we are expecting our model to predict its description or to generate its description based on the given example. So we have given an example for Casper and for the other uh, company. And uh, we have a new company with, uh, we have a new company with the product name, the fast mile. And what it is, it's just a running shoe. And what makes it unique, it's designed for long distance running. So based on the description, based on the properties given and what makes that specific product unique, we want to uh, generate a new description for this specific product. So if we, Uh, let me just return this JSON file. Response. Let me just response. Let me just return the response that I get. Uh, from this generation. Okay. Sorry. Uh, yeah, so uh, I'm just going to return the response that I get uh, from the model. Response. So uh, we're expecting, is that a question? Nothing? Yeah. Yeah, uh, it might not be serializable, the actual object, the response object. Okay, so we need to action of there, right? It has do text. Do text here? Uh, generation zero, generation of zero, do text. Zero. Okay, okay. Okay, so let's try this out. <laughs> So dot pi. Okay, so our app is now running, and uh, if you go to this specific endpoint, it's a post route. Postman. Okay, we, we don't have any body for now, but we'll be adding uh, a body. So after making the inference, we can see that we have our result. And one thing we can do is, yes, uh, we have the separator because I have not added the separator, but uh, one thing we can do is when we are processing, we can post-process and pre-process. So based on the input that we are getting, we can do that later. We can strip both of the white spaces because if you have seen when working with the playground, uh, 
the model doesn't like what space and it really affects the accuracy of the model and uh, after generating the data after getting the data we can maybe assign it to another result is response maybe if specific this is just for example so if this is in the Uh, if this is in the result, we can uh, re replace that. If uh, if this is in the result, we can replace the that specific uh, uh, field or that specific string replace and with this one and we can also replace the new line character this is just for example you can handle that with the stop scans but this is just to show you because when you want to generate a new token or a new other description based on the description that we generated now, we need to pre-process or we need to clean the data for so that to make it ready for the next uh, for the so that to make it ready as the next input. Okay, it hasn't been removed. Okay. Just anyways, this this should work. You know, you get the logic. So, if this specific uh, string is in the result, we need to replace that result, and we need to return the result. Okay, hope it will work now. Yes, it has been removed, and this is just for example uh, as an example, but. Uh, you can do other pre-processing and post-processing. So one of the things that you can do in the pre-processing is you need to remove or you need to strip away any white characters or blank characters. So uh, we have used this uh, statically, but what we can do is we can uh, do it dynamically and for different uh, type of products. So here it's an e-commerce kind of product, but for a different kind of products, we can uh, create a list, maybe uh, product types, product types, and create uh, a new list for each of the products that we have in this specific company. Yes, and we can also and we can create a dictionary and assign a new maybe let's say it's a farming company. It will have a different types of description and a different types of uh, product types. And for the farming, we might give we might dynamically uh, choose that specific key for the farming. And for maybe let's say the e-commerce one, we can choose the e-commerce uh, fields. And for others, maybe. Uh, software programs, application programs, based on the type of product, we, we might prompt our user to also enter the type of product, whether it's an e-commerce product, whether it's a farming product, an application program, or different type of program. And based on those programs, we can select different types of, uh, based, different types of examples that we'll be using to, uh, we'll be using to train our model. And uh, just for now, let's, uh, uh, what we are going to do is we are going to get, uh, we are going to accept an input from the user. So we'll be taking the company, JSON. So uh, what makes it unique? So unique. And the product name uh, 
Und, uh, yes, I think it's the type, okay. The type of the product. So based on this specific uh, inputs that we get from uh, uh, that we get from our user, we can use these specific inputs and uh, give it to our model so that based on these inputs, we can generate a new uh, description for this specific product. We can look at the type, we can uh, look at the unique type of, the, the unique characteristics of that product, the name of the product and the company of the product. So based on, based on the examples that we have, we can generate a new product description. So one thing we can do is we can maybe strip away we can strip any uh, blank blank characters before and after uh, each of the fields, and uh, we can make it ready to be fit for our model. And based on this, yes, we will also specify the separator, and we can uh, then give it to our model, and we will be able to serve it to uh, our end users. And after building this API, you can build a dashboard that's not required for this week's challenge, but one thing that you can do is you can build a dashboard and you can uh, prompt the user to input these specific fields. This is just an example. So for the job description and other, uh, in the other task, the news classification task, you can prompt the user to enter the type of, uh, maybe on the job description that you, you can prompt the user to enter the job description and you can apply or you can implement the backend logic, which will take the data, which will clean it a bit, and will, which will just strip the blank line, the blank characters, and feed it to your model, and finally serve it to your uh, end user uh, directly using your dashboard. And the next thing that I, I want to show you before our, we end our session is we can also train our model. We can also fine tune our model uh, to fine tune our model. The existing model is already perfect and it has been trained on different types of data. But when we want to customize our model or when we want to give a very custom uh, type of description or some specific types of uh, characteristics that is unique to our company, maybe uh, to what we are going to do, we can fine tune that model and we can use that specific model in terms of, in place of the model name that we use. So to create a fine tune, you'll just click the fine tune and uh, you can upload a text file or link to text file. You can uh, take your source from Azure uh, S3 bucket or any other uh, source that is allowed here. You can uh, put the link here and I will just upload a file and it needs a minimum of 32 examples and uh, it will take a time when fine-tuning a model. I'll just preview the data. This is specific to e-commerce related, uh, to e-commerce related data. And, okay. And I will choose the separator and preview the data. And it will give me the five samples just to look at what my data looks like. And I'll review it. And we found one duplicate. If you choose continue, we'll delete the item from the training data sets. I'll just continue with that. And once I start fine tuning, it will take a while for me. It took about an hour to uh, completely train the new model and uh, give me that output. But uh, you just can fine tune to. So uh, now it has started fine tuning the model and once it's done, uh, it will notify you via email and you can use that specific model. So this was the model that I used, that I fine tuned early in the morning. So I can copy that specific name and uh, come to my model and I can use in place of the model uh, argument, I can use this specific uh, model name that I fine tuned and I can continue working on the race part of the model. Uh, is that a question, Antoinette? Yes, uh, we've been uh, uh, 
prompt, prompting the cohesive, uh, uh, I mean, when we give it a prompt, we've been using like specific notation, like a text notation with uh, uh, colon and like uh, the information and providing a separator. But um, I was wondering if we can uh, make, a, I mean, if we can give it a, a JSON or other format, other structure of the text file to uh, train, the, train the model. Can we do that? I mean, to fine tune uh, it or, yeah. Okay, so to fine tune it, you're, it's accepting a text file, but on that text file, you need to specify a separator. I'm not exactly sure that you can create, I don't think it's possible to create uh, a JSON or to use a JSON or other type of data formats. For now, I think it's only allowed text file. You can also refer that to the documentation. Uh, I think I should send you this, Yes, this one and this one, yes. Let me just send this. Uh, it talks about fine tuning a model and uh, the results that we get and what to expect when fine tuning, when to fine tune a model. Just read it when you get time, specifically the second article that I just sent. But for internet, I don't think it's possible to use JSON format when fine tuning a model. Uh, maybe if anyone has looked into that and if it's possible, uh, I think let's know, but uh, for now, I think only text type of data is allowed to uh, to give the model or to the fine tuning model uh, as an input. Yeah, it seems like it because it says like upload your .txt mm. file. Mm. It doesn't like, and the same. link is even uh, with an endpoint of text file. It doesn't yeah, seem yeah. that it will allow another type of data format. Yeah, makes sense. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Kedjo. Uh, I had a question. Uh, so when you say like pre-processing the da our data, this is like a, an LLM model, right? So it, it's not like other models. So what type of pre-processing will we have to do on the on the text file we're giving it? Okay, yeah, this is not uh, another, it's not similar to the way that we pre-process data in other types of uh, model building. Uh, as I've said, one example that you can use is to strip away any blank characters before and after, because the model are crazy. There was one article that was what I was looking for, uh, but uh, that crazy, it really makes a big difference on that crazy when there is uh, a blank character. So you just can strip that away. And maybe if you want to take the output of uh, a current model as an input to the next generation model, you might want to tweak that into the way that you want it to fit to the model, just as an example. Okay, uh, thank you, I got it. And will you be sharing this uh, example code? Sure, yeah, yeah. I think I will structure it more in any way that is suitable for sharing and I'll share that. I will attach it to the Google Drive, on the Google okay. Drive. Thank you. Okay, not, thank you, nothing. I just want to give a few suggestions for and then if that works for me while I was fine. Okay. 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 Uh, uh, what I do, what I did was like extracting all the important information to the text file from the JSON, and uh, by by using some some sort of code, and after that you can find tune it using that. I think that's what I used. Yeah, I think that, that's a good way. Okay. Question. Yeah, th th thank you for that. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, is it any library or like uh, you wrote the script on your own? Like, uh, is there any library you used to like convert the JSON to a text? Uh, I just use my own. Uh, I, in our job description, that I think we have uh, repetitive uh, entity labels, right? Skills, yeah. skills, experience, and diploma. I just appended all uh, all the repetitive ones uh, in one line. So if I have experience, if I have experience as uh, somehow, what what my text file look like? What experience colon all the experience in that specific token, and also the skills and the diploma and the diploma major. That's how I, I extracted it and okay. give it to the tuning point. Thank you. Actually, it seems easy. Like. 
it's not that complicated to write the script. Okay, thank you. I think you can just loop uh, through the JSON file, and since you know the keys, uh, you yes. can extract those keys and add it to a text file. Okay, uh, any more question? Okay, that's nice. Uh, I, I just saw a question in the chat, and uh, that was my issue too. That's why uh, there's in the stuff that made Mathrash asked a question in the chat. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I didn't get that. Nothing. Not not Neil Masrasha asked uh, a question in the chat, and uh, I faced the same issue. Oh, okay. What was the question? Yeah. I was trying to find in the new data set. How can I make certain data set from the thing given the sets? Okay. Uh, I think we are talking the well, and the plan was to give additional uh, training data. We'll try to get that data uh, by the end of today, and uh, we'll provide that data. We'll update the Excel file document. issue is the same for the job description too. That was my uh, okay. issue for okay. the job okay. description one. Too. Okay. Uh, I, I will contact you people immediately after our call and we'll get back to you guys. Thank you. Johannes? Okay. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. So how exactly uh, are we going to feed the, the data? I mean, can you go back to the Flask app? Okay. Okay. So we are just writing the the the, the example issue, right? Yes. The, the example to, to 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 write to to read from the da given data set, and then I think. Is it uh, is the Flask app going to take from the data frame, or are we, or are we just supposed to write it here? Okay, so the overall goal of the project is uh, to to make an inference based on the API on a new data. So for the new data, for example, you have been given a training sample or an example. So based on those examples, when a new news comes or when a new topic uh, uh, comes from a different source you want to score that specific news. And for the job description, you want to extract entities. So uh, we know that how the entities are structured in the, let me just go to the, Okay, so here uh, we know how they are structured, the document, the tokens that are extracted and uh, we want to extract entities from a new job description. So that's what our API is going uh, to do, or that will be the function of our API. So we will have an endpoint for the job description and another endpoint for uh, for the news uh, for the news classification. Okay. I think I understood the, the output. I mean, we do have uh, some specifications, so the output will be just like this. But how do we give it the, the the input? I mean, it's in a in a columns form, right? It's a data frame. Yes, yes. What you are going to do, I think this was covered on uh, Mondays in uh, this session by Abibal. What you are going to do is you are giving, you are going to give maybe the title and you want to classify, this is somehow a regression type of regression problem. You want to score it from one to 10 and uh, you can use, uh, you will first classify it between different ranges and uh, do further classification based on the input that you get. So until you get to a specific range, you will do a multi -class, not a multi class, but uh, multiple classifications on the input data. So you are not just going to read this file and give it to your model, but mm -hmm. in a way that is suitable for your model to get an output, you are going to give an input to the model and you might also uh, give that output of the model as an input to the next generation or to the next uh, classification. Okay, so as, is, as part of some sort of pre-processing. Yes, yes. Here you might need to apply pre-processing. You might need to remove maybe uh, characters, new nine characters that you don't want from the output of the uh, current model when you are going to serve it as an input to the next model. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. 
Okay. Uh, uh, not Mohammed. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes, uh, I have the same same problem that Johannes uh, faced, but uh, w when I'm trying uh, to load the data from the, the Excel file, um, the data seems unstructured or uh, doesn't fit in a data frame like columns and rows. It just uh, a random, a bunch of random of uh, uh, lines and. Uh, so, uh, when you are you giving the data the data frame so, directly? To the uh, I don't know how to to read the data. Uh, do 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 I need to uh, to do an, a number? Uh, Okay, uh, I'm not exactly sure how you're feeding the model, the, the, how you're feeding your input to the model, but you are not just going to reach the data frame as you have been doing in other models. You need to extract relevant information and give it a sample or uh, somehow customize your model and train it to be able to classify or to generate or embed the new task on a new unseen data. So you won't be just reading using pandas and uh, uh, okay, or am I getting your question wrong? Uh, I couldn't hear the the first part of the the answer because internet issues. So would you mind to repeat it again? Okay, so uh, the way that you are going to give. Uh, your model, the input that you are going to, going to give to your model, isn't the same that uh, isn't the same way that you have been doing uh, when feeding it in previous machine learning models. So, for example, it's an array; it's a list of uh, documents of dictionaries, and you just want to extract some relevant uh, some relevant records and feed it to your model. So. In this example, in the job description example, you just want to select the document and you will also give uh, what is extracted, maybe the number of years, the, the years of experience and some other uh, parameters. And you want your model to be able to extract those relevant fields on unseen data or on a data that you are going to give or you are going to accept from your user. So you won't just okay. be giving the entire list or the entire uh, CSV file or Excel file, but you'll only be selecting those that are relevant and you think that will uh, help you to better classify or to customize your model, to train your model uh, in a way that is customized to your need. So I, I, will use that, I will do that by using pandas, right? Uh, to, to, what are you using pandas for? Uh, to extract the the specific data. Yes, like you can extract, you can read it using pandas, and you can again extract the specific fields from uh, the data set that you read from pandas using pandas. Okay, okay, understood. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any more? No, nothing. Else. I just want to make sure, like. Uh, we are going to use the final score, right, for our classification. Uh, the, the what? Final score uh, on the Excel file. Uh, yes, you are going to use, uh, sorry, yes, you, the analyst average score and the analyst rank and the final score. The final score isn't, sorry, the reference final score. No, you're not going to use the reference final score. We are using the analyst average score. If you see the outputs of the analyst average score, you have different uh, different outputs. For the one, it's 1.66. For the one, it's 1.33. We will try to update the data by the end of the day and give you the whole uh, data set. But this is what you are going to use and what you expect the model to predict or classify uh, based on the given inputs. 
Okay, so it means that zero has a value. Zero means something. Yes, yes. Okay. But you'll have a look at the entire data set once uh, the entire data set, uh, once we have access to the entire data set. Uh, okay, then uh, we can wrap our session here. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask on Slack.